Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Health. Today we are going to talk on shoulder pains and to discuss this we have today with us a consultant orthopedic surgeon Dr. Hare Krishna, Citizens Hospital, Sheridan Gampal. Good evening Doctor. Good evening. So before we start, I request you to give a glimpse on your expertise. So hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Y. Hare Krishna. I'm an orthoscopy consultant at uh, Citizens Hospital, Nalagandla. And uh, I expertised arthroscopy in uh, under Dr. B. Chandrasekhar Sanshan Hospital and also Dr. Sonari Cotet uh, in France. And now I'm practicing arthroscopy at uh, Citizens Hospital. So, uh, coming to the question, Doctor, what are the, some of the common causes of shoulder pain? Uh, so, in for shoulder pain, there are diff many different uh, causes. The main four causes that we regularly see in the OPD are uh, frozen shoulder, also called as the adhesive capsulitis. Uh, the second is uh, sub subacromial impingement and uh, three a rotator cuff tear and uh, four arthritis in the shoulder joint. So coming to the next patient doctor, what are the symptoms of shoulder pain? Uh, so depending on the pathology that they have, the uh, symptoms differ from uh, one patient to the other. Uh, when a patient has frozen shoulder, they have difficulty in uh, 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 elevating their shoulder. Uh, and uh, with the pain with pain and uh, restricted movements in the shoulder usually it is a global restriction of movements uh, where all the movements will be restricted like going back or uh, increasing their elevation and uh, when it comes to subacral impingement uh, their symptoms are specifically they have a painful arc where uh, when they are trying to uh, elevate their shoulder they have pain during this movement but there is no pain uh, above this and there is no pain below this and uh, when it comes to rotator cuff tear they have, uh, they will be able to uh, raise their shoulder but with the difficulty when they have a partial tear and uh, when they have a total tear they won't be able to lift the shoulder at all actively but they can lift it passively that is with the other hand okay and when there is arthritis uh, they have, uh, uh, they do have movements but they are all painful. The next question would be what are the factors that increase the risk of shoulder pain? Uh, the most common factor is uh, diabetes like any other disease. So people who are uh, uh, for a long time who are diabetic, uh, they usually have this uh, frozen shoulder problem and uh, they, are, they, they are prone to have uh, rotator cuff tears and uh, arthritis in the shoulder. And uh, the other group of people are uh, young people who go for unsupervised uh, heavy weight training. Uh, they too uh, will suffer with uh, either rotator cuff uh, problems or uh, a subacromial impingement. Next question is Dr. How is shoulder pain diagnosed? So to diagnose, uh, mainly the uh, shoulder pathology is a clinical diagnosis than a radiological. So first, a thorough examination of the patient is very much required because uh, see, uh, in, for, so when it comes, pertains to the shoulder pain, usually the pain will be from around the shoulder only. So anything below the elbow or above into the neck is not from the shoulder. So that has to be clearly uh, seen uh, in each patient. So when people have their pain below the elbow or above the air shoulder, it is usually a cervical spondylosis which is mistaken by, uh, make, mistakenly they think that it is from the shoulder. So uh, the treatment completely varies. So basically the clinical diagnosis is more important in our, in our uh, practice. Then uh, after that, a simple x-ray is the first thing that we order and then uh, an MRI. Uh, to know the rotator cuff because in x-ray we can diagnose up to the bony problems and uh, when it comes to the soft tissue uh, we need an MRI. So uh, the other question is uh, what are the treatment options available for shoulder pain management? Sir? Uh, the treatment options uh, as like uh, in every pathology has different uh, kinds of treatment. So for frozen shoulder uh, it is mainly physiotherapy so you have to uh, uh, defrozen the uh, ca basically the capsule is uh, tightened in frozen shoulder so you have to loosen that capsule by physiotherapy exercise but uh, the pain that is the, that the patient has uh, can be treated by simple medication or uh, intraarticular steroid injection uh, or in the in uh, refractory cases where there is no improvement in for uh, months together uh, we can try an orthoscopic capsule release uh, when it comes to subacromial impingement, uh, usually the, uh, the pain subsides with simple physiotherapy and uh, subacromial uh, injection and uh, uh, can be PRP also. And when it comes to rotator cuff tears, uh, a partial tear can be treated with uh, an intraarticular PRP injection at that uh, tear site uh, which is ultrasound guided. 
and uh, when it comes to a film thickness tear, uh, the only uh, way to treat it is uh, orthoscopic uh, cuff repair. And lastly, the arthritis, the initial stage of arthritis can be treated by simple physiotherapy, like any, uh, the, uh, any other joint arthritis. Uh, but a full-blown arthritis, uh, like a grade 4, uh, can be treated by only shoulder replacement. Uh, when is the surgery advised for a shoulder pain? So, for shoulder pain, usually we treat it by physiotherapy only. Uh, only after a good trial of uh, physiotherapy of, say, 2 to 3 months, if the patient is still symptomatic, only then we go for surgical options. Otherwise, we tend to treat them with physiotherapy or simple intraarticular injections. How much time does it take to get some relief from shoulder pain actually? So, all these are soft tissue problems most of the time. So, usually they take around 2 to 3 months of uh, good physiotherapy, uh, a supervised physiotherapy. Uh, that should do. So, Dr. Next would be, uh, can a person with shoulder pain do basic exercises? Ah, so, coming to the exercises, see, it depends on the pathology of the patient. Uh, when it comes to simple frozen shoulder or subacromal impingement, yes, they can do all, all sorts of exercises. But when it comes to a, par, uh, a rotator cuff tear, they have to be very careful because uh, if they do any um, uh, activities with weights, uh, it could worsen their, uh, worsen their uh, tear. So, for people who have uh, rotator cuff tear, you better not do any uh, physical exercise. But the others, yes, you can. So, the last question for the day would be, sir, can shoulder pain be prevented? Uh, to some extent, yes. So, uh, my advice would be people who are diabetic or when they feel like their shoulder is getting a little stiff, uh, better start uh, consult a doctor first, obviously. So, after that, uh, the earlier they present to us, the easier it is to treat them. So, yes, that it can be prevented by uh, kind of a physiotherapy that they start earlier because before the shoulder gets stiff completely. So, there, uh, that pa that crucial period is uh, where we can treat them and prevent from having a full-blown disease, yes. So finally, uh, Doctor, what do you, what is your opinion or what would you suggest like to finish this shoulder pain like? So my uh, take home message from this uh, live uh, video is that uh, when, whenever you have a difficulty in uh, raising your shoulder, uh, but you are able to uh, elevate it with the other shoulder, uh, with the other hand, you might have a rotator cuff tear, which is uh, better if you uh, if you come early, uh, we can treat it better. So whenever you have this, uh, you are uh, able, we are, you are not able to lift it actively, but you are able to lift it passively, please visit us a doctor. The second thing is the frozen shoulder. Uh, if you have a difficulty in uh, reaching your back or reaching your, uh, uh, like while you are combing, reach, reaching your head, that is usually they have a frozen shoulder. So, uh, the earlier you present to us, it is a simple physiotherapy can treat your uh, disease. So, uh, visit a doctor the earliest when you have the uh, symptoms. Okay. Thank you, doctor. And it was a valuable time and valuable uh, session on this. So, thank you, Ruiz, for joining us today. And we'll be back with another episode of Let's Talk Health next week. Thank you.